it's amazing how we have so much fe- and honestly i think that this is really where it comes back to we have so much fear of man that it all comes back to well if the video's up late then the manager is going to be mad and the manager is going to talk to the executive and the the executive is going to talk to me and tell me i've been slipping and then they're going to fire me and then i'm not going to have any money and then i'm going to lose my house and it's just this cataclysm of like events that aren't real or aren't in reality that we just play out in our head and i think honestly that's where a lot of our anxiety comes from Thank you for tuning in to this week's episode of Trevor Talks. I'm your host, Trevor Tyson, and I'm so excited that you're here with us today simply because I get confused on why people keep tuning in. I think I'm rambling, doing something, but obviously there's something happening and I'm just excited to be a part of it. So thank you guys so much for tuning in week after week. It is beyond encouraging to me. And uh, I know my mom appreciates it because she likes seeing me happy. And the more you tune in, I get excited. So shout out to my mom. Love you, mom. Uh, you're awesome. Uh, this week's episode is brought to you by our friends at Life Audio. So if you're looking for some more podcasts to tune into, be sure to go find your next favorite podcast over at lifeaudio.com. Again, that's lifeaudio.com. Go find your favorite podcast or listen to more of me. I don't care, but go check them out. They're amazing. <laughs> Today, we have two of my favorite people on the planet with us. They are best known for their wildly successful YouTube channel, Nick and Chelsea Hurst, hosts of Forever Change Podcast, parents to the most adorable little dude on the planet, Hudson, and now co-authors of their new book, Marriage Minded, 10 Ways to Know If You Found the One. Please help me welcome two of my favorite people on the planet, probably the universe, Nick and Chelsea Hurst. Dudes, we made it. We did it. It's been like two years. We finally made it happen. Thanks we for here. being here. <laughs> we here. We on, oh we on the Trevor Talks podcast. It's going down. We're going to change the world. It's going to happen right oh here. Goodness. People are going to... Re- listen, I believe this with no fiber of my being that in <laughs> no that in 184 years, there's going to be history books about how the world was changed and it started right here on this podcast. Oh. I, I believe that. And theoretically, it all started on Instagram because that's where me and you met, Nick, and that's where you and Chelsea met, I <gasps> believe. So, nope. you know False. what? False. On Twitter. Oh, I thought you were about to say Tinder. I was going to be like, that's not very Ooh, Christian Lord, of you. Just nope. kidding. Just uh, kidding. But shout out to Elon. What's good? What's happening? Um, <laughs> what up, Elon? But that dude, is yeah, crazy. excited to be here. I think a lot of people probably don't know this. So I'm going to give you a little fun fact right here, right now. Trevor and I were roommates. We were roommates in Social Circle, Georgia, of all places, you know, just where everybody wants to spend their summers, their winters, mm. um, where they want to get a job at Rivian or uh, what is it? Uh, blue, General Mills. Uh, what is it? The Blue Jay? The, the Blue, blue Willow. The Blue, the blue Willow is closed now, closed for business. Um, I think someone bought it, but at the current moment, it's closed. So praise God for that. Uh, the one claim to fame this town had no longer here. Uh, shout out to the Blue Willow Inn. Um, If you're still open, you know, praise God. But at the moment, I don't believe they are. That and then also about 10 miles from you is where the Dukes of Hazzard was filmed. So, that is that is the Dukes yeah. of Hazard. Uh, they filmed the some of the scenes for the Temptations here. What's as of recently, uh, The Walking Dead, uh, Sweet Magnolias for Netflix. We're just a tiny little Hollywood in the middle of Georgia, so it is what it is. Mm-hmm. But you know what? It all started. Nick Hurst, his ministry started in Social Circle, <laughs> which is also false. But you know what? We're just going to put out fake news. That's what we're talking about today. <laughs> fake news network. Oh, uh, fake news network. Dude, but that's so funny. It's insane. Looking back, that has been, what, 2018? 17. I believe. 2017. September of 2017. I uh, moved into your crib and I lived there until January. And so mm-hmm. sh- a short four month stint. Um, but man, wow. It's part of the story. I remember That's surprising something. Nick at your house, uh, when we were early on in our relationship, yep. that was really fun. And you know what? Yeah. Fun fact, my one claim to fame in this life is on Nick and Chelsea's YouTube channel in my at and uniform. Oh yeah. Oh, that's right. Yeah. It's an at and uniform and, uh, Chelsea and I surprised Nick. Well, mainly Chelsea because she's the one that drove like umpteen thousand hours to get here. 
11 hours, so not even in the teens yet. But you know what? Praise God, somewhere up there in Troy something. Don't remember the state, but you came from there. Yep. Illinois. You met Mm -hmm. me at AT AT&T. I'm decked out in my gear, you know. And uh, shy little lad was camera shy. And uh, it was a good time. We went to Chick-fil-A, and I went, there's nobody going to know who y'all are here. Yeah, they did. So. Wow. It's what just a one journey of those we've been on. Oh my goodness. It Trevor has also, been a journey. Trevor also uh, was kind enough to give me the, the plug, and he was pretty much solely responsible for getting me uh, one of my first jobs when I moved to Atlanta, uh, working at AT&T as well. And Trevor and I also uh, crushed. We were very commonly like top two yep. in uh, sales metrics. Uh, in our kind of region and area while we were both at AT and T. So, um, kind of cool. We have a, we have a lot of history that, uh, I think I often just like forget and, and overlook because God has really brought us like you also, Trevor, like God has brought us like so far, um, since those days. And mm-hmm. I'm really, really glad that you were faithful and didn't despise, um, small and humble beginnings. Cause this is really remarkable. And like what you've built with the, with this podcast and then your entire ministry and kind of everything else that you do is, uh, really incredible. So yeah, just from like brother to brother, I'm just really proud of you. Hearing you say that means the world. And just to tag along with that, like, I remember like Chels coming to stay in town with us and not necessarily in the house, but in town, just for all you Christian people out there that like to hop in my emails. Shut up. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm going to leave it at shut up. Uh, <laughs> it's it's just been one of those things to look back like I still have letters in my house that like were written back and forth between the three of us. Chelsea's books uh, still have some business cards you left over here in the oh, same spot. Yeah. I just leave them there because I think it's hilarious. And just the fact that like even before I bought this house in 2017, y'all came and stayed at my parents' house for passion mm-hmm. that one year. And mm-hmm. it's like there's so much that's happened in this story. And I've had people on the show that I have history with, but I don't think there has been anyone on that go back as far as we have. Um, maybe the Sturms, but we haven't like backed into this far the journey and to see what God has done and the opportunities that have been provided. Like I remember being on the phone with you, Nick, while I was working at AT AT&T and being like, man, I'm not fulfilled, like literally crying in my car. Like I should be happy. Like the monetary aspect of it is great. Like I have a house, all this stuff, but I was so unhappy and it just wasn't where my calling was and nor was it where you Mm -hmm. were. It was a launching pad financially. Like I'm so grateful because without that steady income, I would not be able to own a house, um, which I couldn't do right now. Like I couldn't probably couldn't get approved for a loan being a small business owner and just having like fluctuations. There's all this stuff that Mm -hmm. goes into mortgages. It's crazy. And y'all have been there every step of the way I've mentioned in podcasts before meeting you guys at Ruth Chris Steakhouse in Atlanta and having panic attacks and like just slamming an Amex down on the table. Like I got to go just Mm -hmm. leaving y'all high and dry having episodes like y'all seen the good, bad and the ugly. And I'm thankful Mm -hmm. for you guys. And I'm glad that, Now, like y'all are being able to usher this tiny little being into the world Mm -hmm. and you're actively raising the next generation in your home. So it's like a 360. When I met y'all, y'all had just started dating. Then you get engaged. Then you get married. Now you have then you had um, it was Waldo at the time. Was that the first one? Wall, Wally, Waldo. yep, R.I.P. Wally, and now R. you R. have Waldo. Wally. Yep. Yep, poor guy. R. Now R. y'all have... R.I.P. Forrest. Yeah, dude, Forrest. Man, that dude was a champ. And speaking of little Yorkies, my parents went to the same uh, breeder, and uh, I'm dog-sitting for them today, so I have a little nice. Yorkie on the bed oh. that looks just like Forrest. It's nice. hilarious. But it's been a long journey, And y'all are parents now. And I want to start off with this question because part of the biggest part of your ministry, in my opinion, what I've seen, what I've read, what I've encountered with you is raising up the next generation for Christ. So now that you're actively doing that within your home, how Mm -hmm. has that like shifted your mindset on like, okay, we're leading the flock, we're leading the next generation. But now from the moment you wake up to the moment you go to bed to the moment you get woken up out of your sleep in the middle of the night. Mm -hmm. Every single thing you do from this point forward 
is making sure this little dude knows exactly what his worth is and is training him to be the next generation. How has that molded you as a person, as a parent, and as someone that can now speak from a parental perspective for the next generation? Oh my gosh. How much time do you have? Oh, wow. (laughs) All of it. We got all the time. (laughs) I think we could get really specific, but a few things, Trevor, I think of when you're talking about just us being parents and what it's shifted in our hearts. Uh, it's really a, allowed us to reprioritize what is actually essential and what is necessary to put even our time, heart, energy into. Uh, the Lord behind the scenes have does, has done a lot even with us and what work we focus on. I think we stretched ourselves really thin a few years back just trying to like, you know, make ends meet and just like have work on the table all the time. But whenever you have another child or a child in your house and (laughs) you're responsible for that child, but you're also, you know, prayerfully praying over their life and, and like even dreaming about what their future could be and, and like trying to holistically and health in a healthy way, think about how you can influence them the best that you can while also not idolizing, you know, like parenthood and just like making everything about your child. Um, we've really been brought to a place of like what really matters is us building something that is longstanding and that has longevity. Uh, and that could be related to like the ministry that we're focusing on, but it also in the home really, it boils down to, you know, the, the quality time that we spend together and like every single time that we do, it's like making a little deposit into his childhood and like, and building even the way that he feels about each of us, because right now he can, you know, 20 years from now, he couldn't recall back to when he was one and a half years old. He won't remember, but there's been so much data that's been done about even children and how you make them feel Brain and development. you're, you're setting a foundation mm-hmm. for even the way that we, um, start to communicate as a household and you know, the, the, I guess rhythms that we create right now, even if he won't remember them in a few years when he does, they'll have already been established and produced, uh, over time in us, uh, to where it's, it, just kind of runs itself like we're not trying to to figure it all out so I think it's almost God's grace in the very beginning stages when you have a kid where they don't remember every little thing um, or really have a huge memory at all um, when you're first figuring things out as Mm -hmm. a parent so there's a lot there yeah I'll I'll make my answer uh, really short we all have a mutual friend between the three of us uh, who is a beast um, Malachi O'Brien, shout out. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but he's been running a marathon, I think like a hundred days or a hundred and something days straight now. Yeah. And, uh, you know, he's broken the Guinness world record almost twice over. <clears throat> and something, uh, you know, as I was talking to him kind of about this journey that he's been on, he just said something that really is so simple, but so true. And he just said, realizing that I can't focus on anything more than today uh, has just been one of the most freeing things. And so I've begun to look at every day with Hudson, uh, you know, in that context as, uh, every day is a building block. <clears throat> yeah. Every day is a building block and so, the quality, uh, of that day, the quality of that, um, building block in essence that his life is being built on day by day is really important. And I actually have a lot of control over that right now, but I don't get that control forever. I only get to have that control for, you know, the next really 17 years. And, uh, and then my, my part is done. Mm. Um, and so I've really wanted to be intentional about making sure that I'm giving him very quality pieces, very quality uh, building blocks in which his life can be founded upon. And so, you know, that's kind of related to me in the sense that, you know, every day in my relationship with the Lord, every day is a building block for me. So, uh, you know, I can, I can really have a major influence uh, over Hudson for almost two decades. Cause that's the time that, you know, he'll relatively be in my house. 
Um, but every day until I'm with him, I will spend with Jesus. And so I want to maximize and create the best possible building block out of every single day that I can, because I can either forge something really great that day, or I can really squander that day. And so I think just maximizing the time, maximizing the days, understanding that today is a day I'll never get back, being very intentional with my time, uh, and what I say yes to and what I say No to has become a real priority. I think when I was a young guy, I just said yes and yes to everything. And honestly, uh, at 25, I still feel really guilty sometimes for saying no to things. Um, But I just think that your life recalibrates, your priorities recalibrate, um, the things that are most important become different whenever you become a parent, whenever you become married. And, uh, and honestly, now I'm, I'm looking at saying no as more of a gift than it is a, uh, than it is like a, you know, I'm scared of making somebody uncomfortable or I'm scared of, you know, ticking somebody off or something like that. I I just think that making well-rounded wise decisions is, uh, is just a really easy thing. And Mm -hmm. the last thing I'll mention is that we often view decisions with a really long scope, which I don't think is a bad thing. I think it's a really good idea to say, okay, I'm going to invest financially now so that at retirement I can yield, um, I can yield a profit and I can in essence not have to work like I do at 25 because I won't be able to. So I think that's a really good concept for like those longer term decisions. But sometimes whenever we make all of our decisions with that kind of mindset, as it pertains to raising up the next generation for Christ, or as it pertains to marriage or relationships or our singleness or our walk with Jesus or whatever, whenever we view everything through that very, very long range lens, I think that we can often get lazy on the everyday because we think, oh, I've got all this time to make up for it, or I've got all this time where I can actually focus on getting it right, or life is so busy today that I don't have time for that. Mm. And uh, if you don't have time for it now, you'll never have time for it in in the future. So that's a very, uh, I I meant for that to be a very short answer, but it was like four times (laughs) the length of Chelsea's, which um, is quintessential me, but... um, yeah, I, th- I think that's just some of the rambling, some of the things that I've been learning and experiencing and, and mm-hmm. just seeing through the lens of life. And that's a good of refreshing to hear. And you're not rambling. Like one thing that people know when they tune in is I've got, I don't know if it's ADHD or ADD. I haven't been formally diagnosed, but I see rabbit trails to follow. And as you know, I follow them and I go and I go and I go. So (laughs) you're never going to have too long of an answer here. Just know that. And one thing just to piggyback on what you're saying is like, I'm 25. I'm not dating married. I don't have a kid. I've got Frito. He's my kid, my four legged animal. Uh, he's the beast, um, that keeps me going, you know? And one thing I learned at 25 years old that people had been preaching and preaching and preaching and preaching to me. And I just kept neglecting and neglecting and neglecting is saying no, having work life boundaries, honoring the Sabbath, which I still work on and taking care of yourself. Mm -hmm. Um, I've talked about it specifically here for the most part, nowhere else as Uh, that I know of is like last September I had a mental physical breakdown and ended up hospitalized. And it's like, okay, Trevor, like you want to keep saying yes to everything and putting too much on your plate, working from when you wake up to when you go to bed, not working out, not eating correctly, not doing this, that, and the other. And it's like the Mm. Bible isn't necessarily a rule book. It's a guidebook to get through life there are bits and pieces in there that whether you're a Christian or not, that apply to you as well. It theoretically applies to everybody, but for a non-believer, you can learn something from what happens in scripture. Think about the Sabbath. If you're not taking time for yourself to just rest and honor your time, honor your boundaries and have that investment into your life, you're going to fall. And I could speak from example on that. Um, when you get a $10,000 bill from a hospital, you, you know what time it is, you know, and like something for me that I've been trying to integrate into my everyday life is like things that people think are crazy, like polar plunges every day work miracles for me, not saying for everybody else, but like 
there's something about dipping into ice water first thing in the morning that just wakes you the frick up and you're like Oh, okay. Like, I didn't know this side of my brain worked this early in the morning. And by mm. early in the morning, I mean 11 o'clock because that's early for me. <laughs> but just to circle the wagon here, like when you wake up and y'all wake up at like 5 30, 6 30, whatever, that works for you. It ain't going to work for me. Praise God. Um, mm. What does it look like for like a 25 year old parent? You don't have that control over your schedule anymore. When Hudson's up, you're up. How has that been for adapting with your patience, with your time, with your work life and just realizing, you know what? This is out of my hands. I'm going to have to make this decision for me, for my family and for honoring God in the work environment that you have. So how does that play into it? That's a great question. I think one thing that we've really worked on is collaboration in our marriage, especially whenever you can't decide how you want to start your day necessarily. At least, I mean, we could always set our alarm for even earlier than Hudson wakes up, but most times we don't. A lot of times, I mean, even lately we've been sick, and so sometimes we're up through the night and we're coughing and we're trying to get some decent sleep, and then we still have to wake up at 6.30. And um, that's just the reality of it. But I think we've learned like a really big give and take of, Like, I'm going to help you out where I can, and you're going to help me out where you can. And to not take things so personally whenever, you know, your child is going through something and everything in you is like, oh, like, I need space. I need a break. But there's also somebody who has needs and, and you have to fill them. And there's nobody else who can do it but you. You're their parent. Um, And so we've had to really work on just like our communication and our partnership, I would say in marriage of like, Hey, like today is really hard for me. I can barely get out of bed. I'm so sick. Like, can you please just like wake up in the morning? I know you're still sick, you know, cause whenever you're a family, everybody gets sick at the same time. Uh, and so you kind of collaborate on that. Um, but even also just realizing Trevor, I think that Before I got married and before I became a mom, I realized that I really um, idolized being able to have control over every aspect of my day um, and every aspect of even like my preferences of how I like to work and where I am to work and um how long my shower will be and the way that I'll even feel before I go to bed, reading a nice book. And just like, I wanted so much control over my day, but even other moms have taught me, Chelsea, I think you may be idolizing a little too much of like the control of what you think of of day is going to look like, because you have to really surrender from the very moment you wake up. I have these aspirations and these goals for today, But anything could happen, and I have to surrender that to God and and just allow him to to do what he will with the day. Um, And you still set goals, and you still work towards them. Mm -hmm. But it is also holding, like, that control loosely and realizing that, like, it's still not priority in terms of, like, the home and our children and our marriage and, like, what really matters. So that's what I would say as far as what's shifted and how to kind of view, view, um, even our waking up early differently. Yeah. I mean, I I would, I would echo that a hundred percent. I just think that with Hudson kind of ruling the roost in a sense with his own little (laughs) schedule. Uh, I, I just think that, uh, it's taught us a lot about reliance and, um, and that the Lord really, really will, uh, fulfill his promise to us. Like, you know, where we fall short, <clears throat> where we fall short, he's strong, uh, where we can't, he can. And when it doesn't make sense to us of like how something's going to get done, I mean, he provides a way it's just like, uh, I mean, in Exodus. And so, yeah, I, I would really honestly just make that the answer. Like it has, it has been revolutionary to us to just see God come through in different ways that you just, I don't know if I can make a generality like that, but 
Yeah. We've just seen God come through in different ways with being kind of in this stage of life that we never would have been put in a situation to had we not been in this phase of life. And so I think that these different times in life teach you different things. And I think that we've definitely been learning to lean on him a lot more. I mean, Proverbs three, five and six, uh, you know, discuss this at length, but, um, truly like lean on him for strength. And that sounds so boring and so Bible and so whatever, but, uh, no, I mean, it had, it, it really, <laughs> it's been the defining thing for us. You know what I mean? Like, it's yeah. like when stuff doesn't make sense or when we are just truly like bewildered, I mean, there's sometimes where we're just like, the Lord's going to have to, Lord's going to have to make a way. Yeah. I mean, there's been a lot of times where we're brought to the end of ourself, um, as far as our, our own strength, our own, uh, ability. And I've had my pride really ripped up from the root a lot of times, as far as I used to be able to be like completely a hundred percent reliable to like all of my friends, all of my family. Um, but now I still think I can be trustworthy and a great friend, but the timing isn't always in mm-hmm. when somebody expects of me to show up or somebody yeah. expects of me to, uh, give them a good word or insight or, or to answer the phone right away. Like God still honors us and, and honors the, the honesty, the vulnerability of just being able to say, Hey, I can't do this meeting anymore. You know, like I mm-hmm. had this on the schedule, but yeah. like this came up, we, we all got sick or, um, a family member passed or, uh, our car broke down. I mean, this is all like real life scenarios that we've gone through lately. Yeah. And we've had to say, I'm so sorry. This is the second time we've had to reschedule, but this is just life. And I hope you can forgive us and we'll, we will do this, you know, yeah. but it might not happen yeah. the moment that we expect so yeah. just submitting to his timeline. Yeah. And I honestly, I mean, this is just really candid, really, um, just real, but like other people and their situations and their expectations of me are not my priority. Like I can't, I can't help that people feel that way. I can't help that they have put themselves in a situation where I'm the only person that they can rely on for a certain thing. My priority is right here. Yeah. And so if I get to back to your email too late, or if I send that text back four days late, or if I, you know, don't return the call, I'm sorry. Uh, truly I'm, I'm sorry, but I can't, mm. there is, and this is kind of where I've become really, um, not irritated, but I've just kind of had a rub with culture because in the, yeah, this is sort of bled over into Christian culture as well, but there's all this like hustle, grind, crush, yeah. uh, kill, you know, drag it home and eat it kind of mentality. And I think what that's getting down to is work really hard. Just work hard, be a hard worker. And I agree with that a hundred percent. Um, the thing that I don't think is a really good mantra to carry over is like, Oh, I need to wake up at, you know, seven or I need to wake up at five and I need to stay up until three on my side hustle or on my whatever, uh, for the next seven years. And then I'll be free from the grind forever. Like, yeah. And you'll probably be dead because you'll be so tired that you'll get in a car crash or something like something. hundred percent. Yeah. I don't know. I just think that if we work hard with the hours that are given to us and we're really faithful where it matters and we just stay consistent in the little things, um, Mm -hmm. we'll we'll get the same amount or more done. I don't know. I just, I have all these issues with like taking culture so far and running it to the end of its thread. And, um, it, it just sounds really 
dumb in a lot of ways Mm -hmm. to just be really candid. So that's just some of my thoughts and some of the stuff that's been swirling around. It's like, I got to be faithful where it's most important and I've got to be wise with how I spend my time. And uh, I've got to be really thorough and follow through on um, discipline. And uh, that doesn't mean that I can just not get back to people or not fulfill contracts or just like leave people hanging. Like I have to be faithful to that stuff. But if it's like that or this, I have to, I have to focus on this because this is like, like I don't get to raise Hudson again. Yeah. I can send that email a day late and no one's going to remember it in two weeks, but I'll never get like this back. And so there's a very big, there's a very big priority difference there. And I think we as a culture need to find those things. It may not be a kid. It may not be a job. It may not be a career. It may not be a school. It may not be a whatever, but it's something. Your priority is something. And until you get really faithful to that priority and you make that the, the top thing, um, <clears throat> everything else in life is going to suffer as a result. Well, yeah. I, I have a question for you, Trevor, because I'd imagine at your um, age and, and being like an ambitious guy, you know, at a young age, And I'm sure you desire to be in a relationship and you desire, you know, maybe to have a family one day. But right now, like, is it a temptation for you to even give it into like working too much or or um, prioritizing things like in the wrong order or like what Mm -hmm. what is like your current, um, I guess, situation that you're working through? Because you were mentioning in September that you had gone through that really uh, rough mental illness um, challenge, but like, what is like the rebuilding process kind of look like for you? Cause I feel like for us as parents, you know, we have different things that we're working through, but as like a single guy with different desires, like, what does that look like for you? Yeah. And I think, you know, number one, that's an amazing question. Number two, like a lot of people that are listening to this now, like are either around my age or already have kids. There's not really an in-between it's 25 Mm. to 55 is the demographic to answer the question. Like in September going through that, I feel like that was a gift, like Mm. having developing a gastrointestinal infection, not being able to eat, drink, uh, keep anything down for four days. And just going through that physical state of like being so helpless, I can't even walk. That helped me reprioritize a lot of things. And one of the things that I realized is I remember being 19 years old, watching this YouTuber named Sunny Leonard Uzi. And she was talking about, I worked way too hard and I ended up in the hospital. I was like, what a lightweight. That'll never happen to me. Yeah. 25 years old. It does happen. And It helped me reprioritize a lot of things, including setting boundaries. Like I don't have emails on my phone, anything related to work. You don't have contact with me on my phone unless you text or call me. And my phone nine times out of 10 is on do not disturb. You have to call twice if you want to get through. That was a huge thing for me. One thing that I was chasing for the longest time was that hustle mentality. And I don't think that the hustle mentality is necessarily the problem. I think it's the way it's being communicated on go, go, go. Don't rest, rest, rest. You can rest when you're dead not true mm. um is garbage or, and yeah just like the desire to maybe even prove your worth that yeah. like and that's a huge thing for me like i felt like oh i'm working with all these bands that i grew up listening to and like they're on this platform and eventually they're going to figure out i'm a fraud or something and they're going to go away so i mm-hmm. felt like i had to one up every mm-hmm. single thing i did and it's just not possible nor was that the truth the phone calls that i had in that hospital bed had me in tears yeah from <clears throat> yeah <throat> like it just it was it was all in my head and it's like the weekend leading up to this where all this went down was uh, being at Blue Ridge Rock Fest and then doing Choose to Live, our suicide prevention event, the exact same weekend. The video for Choose to Live that was supposed to be premiering five minutes from when it started to get uploaded, like I had no control over that. Uh, the only thing we had access to was Starlink, which was overwhelmed. My business partner handled it. Shout out to Brian. And I was, it was a ticking time bomb. Yeah. It was way too much stress for one person. And here's, here's the thing. 
is that uh, no one, probably now, probably right now, um, a year later, a little more than a year later, one, no one remembers that. Yep. Two, except you. Two, mm-hmm. no one cares. And three, uh, wherever, you know, wherever. What do you mean no one cares? Like I want as him in, to feel like, valid. No, <laughs> no, 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 no. Nobody no, no, is in, thinking like, about that. No one's thinking about, you know, that video at that thing that we were at last year. You remember that event that we went to? Yeah, that video was uploaded late. I cannot believe I just cannot believe it. It got get uploaded over that. on time, praise God. But well, even no, if it didn't, you know what I'm saying? Like, even it, if yeah. it didn't, they were just like, I guarantee you, no one is sitting around a year later over dinner and just being like, I mean, I just cannot get over <laughs> that they did not have that video up. Like, no, like, yeah. people got bills to pay and trash to take out and jobs to get. Like, no one cares about a yeah. little video being like. And so it's it's amazing how we have so much fe- And honestly, I think that this is really where it comes back to. We have so much fear of man that it all comes back to, well, if the video's up late, then the manager's going to be mad and the manager's going to talk to the executive and the the executive's going to talk to me and tell me I've been slipping and then they're going to fire me and then I'm not going to have any money and then I'm going to lose my house. And it's just this cataclysm of like events that aren't real or aren't in reality that we just play out in our head. And I think honestly, that's where a lot of our anxiety comes from is that there's some little tiny situation right in front of me that, yeah, it needs to be addressed and it needs to be fixed. But putting all these 10 or 12 or 15 different things behind it as like this just earthquake of events that's going to happen um, and the world's going to fall apart. is just not the case. And it, yeah. it never has been and it never will be. Like the worst case scenario plays out less than 1% of the time is what statistics tell us. Yeah. And so yeah. um, I don't know. I just think that like chilling out and um, yeah. And uh, hey, and I'll just say this too. This will be the last thing I'll say <laughs> is that whenever we free our, so when we, are, whenever we do what we're talking about, it's kind of like lose this mentality of like staying up all the time and hustling and trying to take care of everything. Whenever we can focus on the stuff that matters the most, the video won't be late or the whatever yeah. won't be late or the, because that will have been a priority. Instead of running around trying to make everybody happy doing all this other stuff that we actually have no business doing, we'll yeah. actually be able to tackle the stuff that we do need to be doing. And um, and so, yeah, I mean, hmm. I, I don't know. That's just that's just some real thoughts and um, yeah. hopefully an efficiency hack, too. Yeah, and one thing yeah. I wish that I knew um, when I was, like, in your shoes similar to you, Trevor, mm-hmm. is, like... Um, it can be so tempting to like, try to almost like do better, even in the sense of like losing that mentality and like trying your best to just like, you know, clean yourself up. But Mm -hmm. in reality, um, sometimes there might be like something like deeper as far as maybe something we experienced in childhood or old mindsets and mentalities that we don't even realize that have been normalized that could potentially just be like sin that is reproducing in our lives that that kind of uh, allows us to cope um, with like everything around us or the relationships that we have and I would just I wish like before I even met Nick or like got into a relationship that I would have done some digging and like uncovering of like wounds that maybe I had that could have been like healed as like a single person. Um, I'm going through like a really, really great counseling uh, session or not session, but like journey with my friend curriculum, um, Carolyn. She's great. And she's just really going deep as far as like how Jesus is our life and he lives inside of us and the devil is going to try to make us believe that we don't have as much authority as we do, that we um, can believe these lies that kind of sugarcoat themselves as things that even the church affirms. And Mm -hmm. it's not across the board that all of these lies are being believed. But when we take hold of the little lies that maybe we believe, like I have to overperform to produce, um, somebody that's worth being respected by my parents or by the people that I love. And I have to 
earn their attention, earn their approval, or I have to make a name for myself because, I mean, surely that's why God put me on this earth is mm-hmm. just to produce and, and to, to be something. Um, yeah. I think that desire is good for us to want to, to do things for God. But if he first doesn't ignite like something in our hearts that just allows us to live in that love, like that just overflows us. It's like, I know I'm talking kind of in this vast sort of language, but I just wish that more people would dive into that healing journey that can take place from even the earliest memories that we have as kids and, uh, allow God to heal us from the root up and Mm -hmm. just see what can happen from that. And I think that can, can look like counseling. It can look like literally getting into a relationship with like an incredible friend, a group of people, um, you know, just holistically, all of those things kind of coming together and like life really starts, starts changing. And I know you're so passionate about mental health and I think Mm -hmm. that's so huge. It's such a big part of it. Um, so I just felt led to, to share that, but I know it's kind of off topic. (laughs) No, no. Like I think the best, like, podcasts to listen to are going off the cuff. Like Mm -hmm. I don't like outlines. I don't like organization in it all. I have like bullet points that I want to hit on. And if we don't hit on them, I don't care. Like I know exactly what needed to be said was said. And like to answer your question on the dating aspect of things, it's like I am working through therapy to try to get ready for something like that eventually. But like right now, I know that like there are roots of things that sway me from even pursuing a relationship. Uh, There's a lot of things that I've either been through in my life that I have like just been born learning from the moment you're born, you're learning about yourself. And there's a lot that I have to learn personally before I could bring somebody else into it, nor Mm. would I, they want to be involved in it at this point, if that makes sense. And I think it's very wise, like from what I've been through in counseling and therapy, it's like, it's wise to know, like, that's not the headspace that I'm in. And that's what I think is so powerful about y'all's story is because you weren't necessarily thinking like, oh, I need to get in a relationship right now. It kind of just happened on Twitter. And (laughs) it's incredible to think like, okay, Nick sees this pretty girl in Troy, wherever the heck it is in uh, the U.S. And it's like, I'm going to shoot my shot. And I just... I think it's a beautiful testimony. I'm like, okay, it's kind of funny how y'all met on social media. Social media is like a big part of your life. But one thing that I really want to weigh in on is you guys from the outside, it would seem there's an immense amount of pressure to perform, to put out videos, to do this, that you have over 1.4 million on YouTube alone, a combined over 800,000 on social media. From the outside world, people are like, man, they need to just be busting out content every single day. And I've never, ever in my life got that vibe from either one of you. Whenever I've seen like YouTube plaques at your house, they're either in a closet or facing the other way, like (laughs) on the floor. It's never even a thing. Like, I don't even see that side of you ever. Like, it's not your bread and butter. Your life and ministry is bread and butter. Nick, you've been speaking around the country. It's incredible to think that a lot of people, including myself, historically have gotten in those seasons like, man, I need to have a platform. But for those of you who are listening that are aspiring towards that now, I'd really love to hear your thoughts on why that's not the best idea right now. And maybe there needs to be a crash and fall. I know I've had mine. Hmm. Um, and it wasn't like last year, like over the past few years, like the more that God's blessed this journey for me has been in the seasons that I've let all that go. Hmm. I don't, have that urge when I wake up in the morning to check Instagram to see if something went viral. In fact, I think viral videos are detrimental to some brands. Um, I think that this whole TikTok culture is dangerous and it's not sustainable. Yeah. So it's a drug. drug. It is, it's crack cocaine 
and I wish I could oh insert gosh. like a uh, Dave Chappelle <laughs> meme right here, but it, it's it is it is equivalent to crack cocaine in this culture. You have so and who calls it crack cocaine? It's crack. Uh, <laughs> like so many people are chasing this. Like oh, I need that blue check mark, and that's the eight ball. Whatever. Yeah. I, I quit, I'm equipped with the drug references. It's getting a little far. It's funny. Go watch Chappelle show. Um, there's so many people chasing that right now. Mm. And they're going to fall flat on their face, as we all have. So for both of you, as a married couple, as now co-authors of a book, how do you balance all this stuff? Like, outside of parenting, just work and life. Chelsea and Nick, you have your marriage. You work together. You collaborate. How is all this working so efficiently? It, oh, it's not. That's the answer. <laughs> um that's funny. Yeah, I just real. This one will be quick. I promise. Um, I. Yeah, my yeah. My answer to that would be: I think that people can really see through um, humans who are trying to build a platform because that's been the commodity of our time, a commodity of value is no longer net worth, but following. And people can really see through those who are just trying really hard to build a following. Uh, you can smell it a mile away. And I think that that's really repulsive to people. So there's a level of discontent in the creator whenever they're not getting what they want. They want people to be following. They want people to be engaging and liking, and they get really ticked when people aren't. But the reason they aren't is because they can see through the charade, even though the creator thinks that no one can. And so for us, it's just been, um, I, th I think honestly, a lot of the secret sauce has just been, we're, we're just going to make stuff that's real and uh, we're going to make it when we want to make it and not when they expect it. And uh yeah. And I think it's just been a really, yeah. I mean, for us, it's just, it is what it is. Like, it's just genuine. It's, uh, we don't care if you watch it or if you don't, I'm not going to go and hunt you down and tell you to watch my video. Uh, I don't think I, I think like twice I've maybe posted a story saying like, watch our new video. I haven't yeah. posted on Instagram since September. Um, I don't, I'm just that, I don't know. That's just not where I find value uh, that's not where i find like happiness or joy it's like i've had a following and chelsea's had a following and you've had a following for a really long time and um i i just wish i could tell people who are just gunning after that it's like i, I really hope that you get it like i really want mm -hmm. you to get it i really want you to get a hundred thousand followers on on instagram or whatever so that you can see it's not what you thought it was <clears throat> yeah. And you know, <laughs> yeah. the listeners on the other side of this podcast will sit there and say like, yeah, Nick, that's really easy for you to say, but you got brand deals and you don't have to go to a job you hate and whatever. <clears throat> and it's like, um, man, I, yeah, I, it's amazing how we romanticize everything that we don't understand. Um, yeah. Cause it's got its own, it's got a lot of hardships that come with it too. Chelsea and I've said on numerous, numerous numerous occasions that man we just wish we could go back to a nine to five and just do that because it's so much simpler and it's so much easier and so much more predictable so i'll leave it at that um yeah as far as balance um and how do we balance it all i think we've taken on the mindset of taking each day as it comes and then also trying to to plan for the week as far as overall what we would like to do and get done, but doesn't always happen in the exact same timeline. I mean, I can't even tell you how many times I had intentions to even put up a YouTube video that week, but yeah. so many things got in the way and life happened and I, I, I couldn't, and I had to just allow, um, just allow space for that to not become an idol. Cause I think a lot of us idolize mm -hmm. our jobs just because there's numbers behind it or there's, there's, there could be what is deemed success, but I've had to do a lot of rewiring of what true success is. And I believe it starts from the home and from the heart of like, you know, how, how is your relationship with the Lord? Mm -hmm. How, how are things at, at your house? Um, and that is what success is to me. Mm -hmm. 
you know, anything that stems out and extends from that is a blessing and it's great that God uses it. But I mean, we are keeping first things first now. And, um, I think that has changed a lot for us. Yeah. Like if home, if home is chaotic, then life is chaotic. If home is calm and a place of solitude and rest, then the tone of life will, uh, usually, usually follow that. And, I just want to say, like, I'm really appreciative that that's a lot of the message that you have begun to put out. I've noticed a significant change in the voice and in the tone um, of your podcast and of your at because I listen to I listen to Trevor talks. Um, <laughs> but I've noticed that like significant change in your voice and in your life and in your content and in just the way that you interact with me and like our text message exchanges. Like, you just have a lot more of that. Um, you have a lot more of that, of that tone and of that, uh, aura about you now. And, uh, I just think it's better. I, I think you would say it's better, been better for you. And I think it's a better message overall for, um, listeners of yours here. And, uh, there's nothing wrong with working hard. There's nothing wrong with being honorable and faithful to what you have committed to, <clears throat> but there is something wrong with running yourself into the ground for the, um, for the appeasal and approval of other people. Um, and, and yeah, I, I just don't think that we want that to be the message that, um, we share with our lives because no one at my funeral is going to say, man, look at all that stuff that Nick did. Look at all the stuff that he accomplished. They're going to say, man, look at what kind of man Nick was. We should all, uh, hope, I hope that they say this. We should all be, um, you know, men like that. We should all have character like that. We should all have integrity like that. Like let's let Nick's life be a challenge, uh, to all of us to be faithful where we're planted. And so, um, yeah, man, I'm just really appreciative, appreciative of you having us on today and, um, of us getting to have a, a conversation like this. I think it's been really beneficial for us and it's just brought stuff to the top of mind for me all over again of the stuff that really matters. And, um, hopefully it's been beneficial for, for listeners too. Shoot. At this point, I'm like, dang, I just sat through a therapy session, which I love. Like when I walk <laughs> away from this chair and I'm like, whew, what the heck just happened? Like, I I feel like listeners are going to do that as well, whether they're listening in their car, um, in their classrooms, on their toilet, like wherever they're <laughs> listening. Like, I hope that it's beneficial for them. Like if you can have therapy on the pot, have therapy on the pot, you know, and by pot, I mean toilet. So praise God. You know, this conversation has been therapy so thank you guys for being a part of it and where can people learn more about your new book where can they buy it and where can they follow you yeah you can find the the book on um amazon and barnes and noble are the really two big places but really anywhere um you can google it marriage minded by nick and chelsea and it'll come up somewhere for you to buy it and then uh i'm official nick h on all socials yeah, I'm Chelsea K. Hurst, and then we have a joint channel, Chelsea and Nick. And yes. we're so honored, Trevor, that you would have us on, and we really appreciate you even um, just talking about what we did. It was really refreshing. Yeah. It was refreshing for me. I love y'all. Thank you guys so much for being here. And for everybody listening, we're going to have the links for everything in the description for Forever Change Podcast, for Marriage Minded, for all of their socials. Everything's going to be in the description below. And if you're struggling today to find worth in your life, to find value, to just see the light of day, just know that there is hope. There is light at the end of the tunnel and there's always a reason to live. So as per usual, there are going to be resources listed in the description below, whether you're listening on the audio experience or YouTube for death to life, heart support to write love on her arms, um, teen hope line. There's so many resources. We love you guys so much. And I pray that this episode has helped you find some value and some hope in your life. And just know that suicide is never the answer. Your life matters, and if you could take it from anybody, take it from me. I see value in you. I don't have to know you to see that you were born with it. I love you guys so much, and we'll talk to you next week. Bye now.